Hi, and welcome to the Cutting Edge Vet Podcast, hosted by Dr. Terry Fossum, uh, author of Small Animal Surgery. And, uh, and we have Dr. Ursula Goetz, the founder of Brady Care. Uh, Brady Care is an uh, online platform that helps connect uh, and educate veterinarians on new techniques globally. Uh, Ursula, thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. This is super exciting to be here with you guys today. Thank you. Ursula, um, it's such a pleasure to see you again. I know we've talked a number of times about what you're doing. And it's so exciting to see somebody bring something like Brady Care, which I'm going to have you explain, um, to really help educate veterinarians about how to do surgery and procedures. So um, how, first, tell us about Brady Care, what it is, and then tell us how you got started, why you decided to go down this route. Yes. So, yes, so I am um, a vet by trade as well, of course. And um, for me, it was sort of never a question. Um, I'm one of those typical people, right? From very little age, I said, I'm going to be a vet when I'm grown up. So probably like a lot of people um, always respond to when they meet a vet as well. And uh, so I just never changed my mind. And I think part of it was... Um, uh, yeah, I have to go back quite far, actually, to be honest with you, to make it, uh, to, to explain it properly, because I had um, quite a lot of health challenges when I was very little, when I was young, when I was a child. And for me, um, animals, so I was bullied in school as well. And, you know, how um, children who um, might have experienced that often have a special link with animals um, and I was no different. So um, to me, animals always played a very, very significant role because they were almost my friends who weren't judging me. And um, although I always wanted to be a vet, that was only um, reinforced when I was sort of a teenager and, and young adult that I really wanted to go down that route. Um, and although English isn't my first language, um, why before I started university, I actually came to the US. Um, so the US played a, a massive uh, influence on uh, my whole life, actually, because I, before I went to university, I uh, was an au pair over in San Francisco. And um, that's when I properly learned English and with being able to speak English properly, um, it just opened up a completely new world to me. And with that also traveling and with the traveling, I saw how um, sad and uh, desperate a lot of animals are suffering on the streets, street dogs and cats. So from that point on, I kind of made that decision that I needed to help as many um, dogs and cats and, and other animals as possible, really. Um, so that's um, how this came about. So to be honest, to me, it feels like I'm just paying back what they had already given me a long time ago. So um, that's that's how how that came about. But um, I uh, I was a, a normal vet, sort of a mixed practice, uh, and then focused down a little bit more on uh, small animals and and I soon found out that I do love surgery and I do love um, teaching. And with all the traveling that I did, I found out that. Um, Unfortunately, the veterinary education in many, many countries is not very advanced, meaning that even routine surgical techniques are not being taught properly. So that, again, shifted everything for me um, because it just never felt like I was doing enough, even when I was doing charity work, sort of spending my money that I had earned somewhere at its charity uh, on an island in Thailand or Indonesia, um, it just never seemed enough. And that's um, where the Brady Care idea was born, basically. So Brady Care is a not-for-profit that teaches veterinarians how to do surgery. Tell us more about that. Where do you go and how do you do that? And, you know, I, as a surgeon, I'm thinking, is there so much more than teaching them how to do the procedure because, you know, you need to teach them sterile technique and, you know, pre-op and post-op and there's just so much that goes into surgery. So 
Um, tell us how you do that because it's, it's incredible. Yes, exactly. So um, I lived uh, a long time in uh, in the UK where I did an, uh, the um, sort of a uh, little bit of an extra education as a small animal surgeon, and then um, and then another two years uh, in veterinary education. But you are absolutely right, and uh, it's really um, you. The, I love it because you have to think totally outside the box, right? Like you say, it starts from there is no operating table. What are we going to do? Okay, we have a table, but okay, that table is very, very low. You know, you you can do one surgery on that. And then my surgeons, even if I teach them, their back will be breaking because they are leaning over so far. Um, so, you know, you find things that you can put underneath, whether it's books under the table's legs, whether it's books or bricks or something. Um, and uh, sometimes I've worked in environments where um, there are a constant power cuts or there is not even electricity. So um, I have a very powerful um, outdoor um, uh, bicycle lamp, <laughs> which which works very well as surgery light and is very reliable um, because it has rechargeable batteries and I come with extra packs and then we can do the surgery not reliant on electricity as such and um, and having oxygen tanks rather than um, uh, oxygen purifiers and and uh, which would again need electricity so you have to always think outside the box and what do we have and it literally starts with one of the modules which is not done yet but will be called facilities and equipment because um, how can you actually uh, minimize the expenses but still perform clean and aseptic surgery and um, and do it to a high standard without having to spend a lot of money because unfortunately the veterinary education the countries where it is really needed is also where we have the issues with street dogs and street cat population and the fairest and the most humane way of managing that population is through sterilizations, through neutering,s through castrating the males and um, um, I mean that is a whole new uh, big topic but um, you know, just the surgical techniques of having hand gel um, that uh, you then send your students away to wash your ha their hands. And then you have, I have a, a torch that is a blue light and then you can show, um, okay, look here, um, your hands, your fingernails are showing up blue. This was not washed properly. And, you know, it's really, really um, hands-on, literally hands-on practical exercises. And also the online platform is very, very interactive. Active. So um, ideally vets or vet students who are using the platform would be able to use the Brady Care online um, teaching platform first to get ready for the practical teaching, which will help them. It's again, um, in a lot of countries, and um, even the anatomy may not be taught properly in cats and dogs because there is much more focus on livestock still, because that is the number one priority on how to produce um, food um, for people, unfortunately, in many countries, the idea of having pets is uh, is still relatively new, um, or the finances won't allow it, etc. Um, so it is to be able to f facilitate those organizations, NGOs, charities, universities, individual veterinarians, vet students, so that they can do the platform and whether you are uh, maybe a timid or a little bit of a nervous surgeon in the US or if you are a vet student somewhere in South America it should be the lessons are about two minutes long so it's not that you have to go and sit through long hours of reading um, so it also facilitates for people who have English as a second language so it's very very visual and very interactive. So let, that, me, yeah. uh, let me ask you just a quick follow on question to that, because I know a lot of hospitals, human hospitals, when they change out equipment, um, they sometimes just, you know, just get rid of it. Sometimes they give it to another to a not for profit. Um, so let's put a let's put a request out there. If there's anybody that hears us that has equipment that could be you know, repurposed in use in these other countries, you know, reach out to Ursula and 
uh, we'll put your contact information or Brady Care's contact information. So yeah, the basic instruments, um, needle holders, forceps, um, hemostats, really the, the uh, really the absolute basics is usually the most needed because um, any any bit more fancy equipment like I said that needs um, electricity or uh, is uh, expensive to transport is usually um, less less needed we really often need the, the basics mm. totally makes sense the one thing that um I, I really in our initial discussion the one thing that came to mind that i thought was so interesting is if if you ursula if you were to go to a foreign country and help a few dogs you, you're the the cap is basically limited to your time and by you pervading providing brady care um, and these online educational courses, plus the you know on-site training as well, it the the amount of the impact that you can have to the animals is truly exponential, um, and that's something that I think that is is really important. So if you go to uh, you know um, uh, a, a portion of the world that can't afford these different um, the training that that otherwise would be very expensive, and you're providing that for cheap, like the for every one veterinarian you're probably helping a thousand dogs or something like that or, or cats. And that's just incredible to see how your small footprint can make such a huge difference globally. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I mean, for me, it just, I think because I, I do go a lot to charities um, in, uh, in uh, countries where there is a lot of street dogs or a lot of um, street cats and the need is incredible. And I have had years and years where I would just travel and go and help whenever I had a minute and would spend my money to, to go there and, and to try to do as much as, as I can in the given time that I have, but it never felt enough. Um, and there, I started a clinic, a small clinic on an island in Malaysia, and I was in the end going there five times a year. Every time I just could find a little break, I would work nonstop and then go for a week or so because there was no vet on the island when I wasn't there. And they would wait and wait and wait and email and say, Dr. Ursula, when are you back? And so I felt also more and more under pressure because they heard about it. Other people heard about, can you come here as well? Come here as well. And I just was in this race to try to do as much as possible, getting more and more exhausted and more and more frustrated because it was never enough. And, uh, and luckily, almost um, yeah, almost like a godsend, I had students reaching out to me and say, can, I, can you teach us when you're here next time? And I said, yes, please um, come and, uh, and I will teach you and you have to help me and you have to do everything from start to finish, from physical examination to recovery so that you can be independent of me and you can help, you know, not just, I'm not this, I'm coming in with my hands scrubbed and I'm the Mr. Surgeon now or Mrs. Surgeon and I only do the fancy bit in the middle. No, you have to learn everything from scratch and you have to be able to be independent and self-sufficient. And so um, that's what I did. And that was like, oh my God, and I really liked it. And I felt that, okay, this makes a lot more sense. This is much more, um, that has a much more um, impact in the long run. And then I focused on that. And that is really how Brady Care started because also in many countries where I visited, um, I came in with my hat on, okay, I had my education uh, very well done in Europe and I have an expectation of what a qualified veterinary surgeon should know, but there is no such thing. There is no such thing as a baseline that goes across the globe. Um, the the uh, level of education and the level that people know on the day of qualification is vast. Um, so I needed to take a step back and go, okay, um, what do you really need to know for surgery? So each chapter does an anatomy recap. And actually, I've had quite a few, um, um, how do we say that, um, experienced, no, not experienced, mature, do you say mature? <laughs> 
um, uh, surgeons or vets who came to me and said, well, I had a career break and then I had a family and then I came back and I haven't done surgery in the last 10 years. And I've always loved surgery, but now I feel really scared of doing it again, cutting into an animal. I haven't done it in so long and things have changed. And and uh, and said, I love that you recap the anatomy in such a non-judgmental way and non-assuming because it made me feel like I was okay not to know. And um, and so I thought, oh, that's interesting because actually um, I found that the the vets who are really concerned and really worried about making a mistake, they often turn out to be fantastic surgeons because they are very respectful of the tissue, Halstead's principles of surgery, and, and they are really wanting to do it right and pay really good attention. And I want to get those back in. I want to have them um, and help and uh, be confident. And whether this is in the US where they maybe uh, spend a day for um, neutering um, for a non-kill shelter or something or you know anything um, that it doesn't matter where you're from I think um, I had one lovely lovely vet in uh, Portugal who was 63 and she said I want to learn it and I have my nephew here he speaks English he will translate <laughs> And uh, and her boss even said, no, you are too old. You'll retire in two years and I can't invest that money into you. And she said, I'll teach everybody I know. I will come and I will teach everybody everything that I've learned. And she was fantastic in the end. And she was working at the municipality and it was, it used to be a kill shelter. It's not a kill shelter anymore. And she's doing a lot of surgeries now. And those are the stories that um, also fuel the enthusiasm for me to keep going because it is a lot of work to develop this online platform. And I do spend a lot of time at my desk right now. And this stuff helps me to go, yes, this is why. That That's incredible. And the, you know, the, so you're exactly right. You, what Sean said makes a lot of sense. You went from you being able to only do so much to increasing your universe because now you're teaching other people or teaching other people how to do the procedures that that they didn't know how to do until they met you. So that's that is really awesome. Ursula, what else do we what else can we do to help you move Brady Care forward? It's so important. You're educating people, as you said, all over the world, but a lot of your education is in um, third world countries where the veterinary education leaves a lot to be desired. So what what do you need um, from the, what, what can we do as an audience? What can we do to help you? Thank you. Thank you for asking this question, Terry. Yes, of course. I mean, at the moment, we are still in the very uh, first baby steps, so to speak. So officially, Brady Care has not launched. So um, there are um, the launch should happen in October, which means that the first module, which will be the Bitch Bay, and that will turn out to be about a four hour online um, course, very, very heavily um, images, uh, videos, graphics, quizzes. So it's, it's quite interactive, but that will launch uh, in October. So um, if you if you are um, um, anybody anybody who's listening and interested in helping animals, whether it's in shelters or on the street, wherever you are in the world, the best help right now would be just to talk about it, to go and visit, visit the website bradycare.org. It's Brady, Brady, um, Brady um, was my cat. Um, he was also a shelter um, cat which was um too vicious too nasty to be rehomed and was uh, therefore supposed to be sent to heaven and um i couldn't stomach it um just because of his character and so he came home with me with the assignment that i should give him a physical examination whenever he lets me well he didn't let me for a whole year and by that point i couldn't give him up again so um and Brady, he uh, he was a stunning, stunning cat. There's also pictures of him on the website. Um, who has taught me to be patient, and um, and that he became. I always get a bit emotional. <laughs> 
talking about him. Um, he has taught me to be um, patient and that he became such a, <clears throat> sorry, he became such a trusting uh, pet in the end um, that I could do anything with him. Um, although he chased me like a vicious Jack Russell the first year <laughs> and would literally bite me into my calves and my arms. Um, and um, he was, uh, it was such a sad story because he did have a loving owner who passed away, but um, she was an elderly lady and she lived in a tiny studio flat. So he had never seen anything outside something that's um, like a big room. And, uh, and that's not a lot of room for, he was a Maine Coon and, uh, and so he, he, when he was rescued, he, that was a very, very traumatic, traumatizing experience for him. And he was just terrified of anything or everything that was not that tiny little room that he had lived in for six years. Um, but he was, um, I really, I really thought I could not do it because, um, it was, really terrible at times <laughs> having such a vicious guy I had no more friends coming to visit me <laughs> because they were too scared of him um but he turned out to be such a fantastic um trusting uh, cat that I thought wow you really have taught me patience and um and um I think we also when we see people whether they are um a bit difficult or seem like they don't maybe no much or you know frustrating in whatever shape or form there is sometimes or very often a backstory to it and uh, and I think patience uh, is really helpful in most of those cases and a little bit of understanding and just waiting and listening and see what comes out and uh, so Brady Care was born and in his memory um, we have the platform now and yeah, going to the platform and the whole usual um, of sharing, tagging, following, um, all these uh, things would be fantastic on Facebook, Instagram, of course, we need to get the name out. If we don't get the name out nowadays, that's the way it is, then uh, even the best idea will not become success. Um, so and um, but if you are um, a vet or um, even want to go um, and interested maybe in the course, there is a sneak preview on the website as well. Um, go and log into that and have a have a look around, have a sniff around in what is already out there. And there is an, a feedback form at the end. So we'd love to hear from you. And uh, um, also you, anybody can sign up for the newsletter or if you are not a vet, um, just interested in animals or animal welfare, then um, what we will do is that uh, the actual platform is for veterinarians only, but anybody will be able to purchase a login for, and that will then free a login for somebody who cannot afford it in the developing world. So as an individual, you can get onto you can contact us and get onto the waiting list and so you can say, well, I have seen uh the trouble of street dogs and cats and uh where i was on holiday or something like that or even in the us it doesn't matter uh, and you can buy a login for um somebody who uh who can then use it uh free of charge this will be the principle anyway we call it the brady care robin hood principle so um the platform will not be free of charge, but we are charging uh, an amount for people in the developed world, um, which will then automatically unlock a login for somebody who cannot afford it in the developing world. Um, so that will therefore then, if let's say somebody in London or in the US uh, buys a login and might only get to do uh, a spray or neutering surgery once a week, but they will unlock uh, the same course for somebody who is working with street dogs and cats who will maybe do 10 a day and that will then really really amplify the impact um, also with your own purchase of a login that's lovely so brady care b-r-a-d-y-c-a-r-e dot -E org yes everybody go on check it out thank you so much that's fantastic it's a great that's site fantastic. and you're doing wonderful work I have to say, um, 
anytime I visit a foreign country, you do see kind of the, the, the neighborhood or village dogs and some of them look like they're in great shape, but there's always a couple that look like they are hurting, you know, and then they could use some sort of medical care from a, from a veterinarian. And what you're doing is basically helping disseminate this information um, to, to really, to really amplify that. And, and I just have to say one more thing. When I'm sitting on this uh, podcast with two incredible, inspiring ladies who, you know, knowledge is power and, and you guys have both done it in separate ways, but you're both disseminating, disseminating the information. Um, Terry, you're doing it through your book and Ursula, you're doing it through Brady Care. Um, and that, that's what's most important because you have generated all this knowledge throughout the years and now you're giving back to the community by, by making it available to them. So um, I just want to say thank you to you both for what you guys both do for, for the animals. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I thank you, Ursula, for what you do because uh, I know it's hard work and I know how much it means. And I've been to those countries that you're talking about as well and I've seen the level of care um, and I've seen how much the veterinarians care. I mean, they're wonderful people so, and they're just waiting um, for knowledge. They're, they're hunger, hungry for it. So uh, thank you for doing what you do to raise yeah. their level of care. And thank you to you as well, Terry. I think, um, you know, you are my Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> You are fantastic. You are, um, and thank you also for being patron of Brady Care. I think that is, uh, I'm so grateful to you for that. And I think uh, I agree with you, Sean, that uh, Terry is such a wonderful, powerful woman and such an example in a, not anymore, but what used to be a male dominated um, era and uh, and and then just going out there and basically writing what is known in a lot of countries as the small animal surgery Bible um, and just kicking ass like that, I think is just absolutely fantastic. I thank you so much for that, Terry. That is uh, uh, really, really, really something. <laughs> and Thank I'm you. so excited that um, the new edition will be coming out soon and it will be online. And um, yeah, yep. that uh, maybe we should mention that as well, that it's coming out again and uh, being online and linked with Brady Care, um, that Brady Care will be found in there as well. Do you want to say something, Terry, about your new yeah, book? So the uh, so what Ursula's referring to is the book you can see over my shoulder there, Small Animal Surgery. That is the fifth edition. The sixth edition will be coming out late 2025. We're working on it right now. Um, and we are going to add some links to some of the procedures that Ursula teaches in Brady Care. So, um, so people will have an opportunity to see what those are like, and then they can go on uh, to the Brady Care site and see the wealth of information that you provide. So, excited to do that. And, um, the last thing is, Ursula, for the folks that are not veterinarians, um, there's a donate button on your website, right? So if you are just a listener and a pet owner and go on vacations and see these pets out there and you just want to find a way to make your dollar, your investment or your, your donation go as far as humanly possible in helping pets globally, um, it seems like a great way to do that as well. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, that is, and that um, button is already active. The um, purchasing of membership goes via um, getting in contact and then signing up for the newsletter. So that is not active yet because we will be hosting it on a different site once the course is ready to be launched, but that um, platform is not free of charge. So we're holding back uh, because it is a charity and we, we have to watch the pennies and uh, and so we, these uh, some of the links will only become active once we are on the uh, on this on the final platform, which is not free of charge. But um, yes, of course, it is. Uh, we have a former BBC crew uh, doing high uh, resolution, fantastic images and uh, uh, pictures of the actual surgeries. And um, so it is a costly platform, but hopefully with donations, 10 modules are currently planned and we're working on the first one to be launched in um, October. So um, 
Yes, uh, it's it's a big it's going to be a big platform because, as you say, Terry, you know, there it's not just the surgery. There is so much around it that is absolutely necessary, and unfortunately, it still happens in many countries that um, anesthesia are not monitored or um, they haven't got the perfect drugs available and animals wake up during surgery and um, or may not recover very well or um, have not adequate pain med management. And we are addressing all of these things as well. So also in countries where surgeries may be already happening, we want to elevate the standard um, in a cost effective way. Um, and so we will be addressing those topics as well. Of course, in a non-judgmental way, just in terms of addressing best practice. That's awesome. It's awesome and so needed. So everyone listening, uh, go on to BradyCare.org. You can donate now. Those donations will be put to great use. You will be helping teach veterinarians how to do procedures in countries where they don't actually have maybe that education right now. So, uh, So go on. Donate. We appreciate that. And thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, Ursula, for your time and for what you're doing for the animals, most importantly. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for helping so much. That's amazing.